<laughs> hey, this is Milana Rashic and you're listening to the A Space. Hello everyone and welcome to the Ace Space podcast, the volleyball podcast brought to you by CEV where every week we get, well, quite frankly, a brilliant co-host. Uh, firstly, let's say hello. We've uh, rolled the dice and mixed the team up today. Key Michael, how are you? Hi Dave, I'm so happy to be here. I just told you I'm a little bit nervous, sweating a little bit for the first official podcast, but I'm excited. Well, it's great to have you here. It's also great to have our co-host. Um, I hope you don't mind big introductions because I'll start a drum roll and say world champion for club and country, Olympic medalist, Champions League winner, best middle in all of the major competitions in the world, Milena Rasic. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> well, I, this, is my, this is also my first podcast so far so i uh, i'm also pretty nervous but okay we will we can handle this yeah we can <laughs> can you we'll can fun. you all stop saying you're nervous please we're just <laughs> are we a making you nervous <laughs> are we making you nervous <laughs> If you are new to the A Space podcast, we record these remotely. So I am currently in beautiful sunny London. Key, where in the world are you? I am in beautiful south of France, also sunny. And Milena, where in the world are you? Well, <laughs> I'm in a beautiful rainy Belgrade. It feels like <laughs> January here. <laughs> ah, so you are uh, is well, you're back in Serbia, but is Belgrade has it always been home or is it just where you've settled for the time being? Well, I I changed home a couple of times, but uh, for the last couple of years, I live in Belgrade. Oh, beautiful. Have you been key to Belgrade? You know, that's one of those questions. I, I think I have been, but I don't want to put my foot in it because I sometimes forget that I've been places and haven't. You know this, Milena, when you're traveling for volleyball, sometimes it blurs a little bit. You see the hotel, you see the, the hotel room, the, the, the gym and the airport. And the fitness gym, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a glamorous life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Milena, we've got you for a few episodes, and I'm really looking forward to getting to know you a little bit better and for the fans to get to know you too. In this first episode, we would like to concentrate on the Vakif Bank years. Now, Key, you spent some time playing in Turkey. What are your yeah. memories of playing against Vakif Bank? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think probably similar to everyone's memories playing against Vakif Bank. Painful. <laughs> um, they're always, I mean, always the team to beat, at least the top two teams in Turkey and then in the European Championships, always bringing heat, let's say. You can never, you're always the underdog when you go up against Vakif Bank. But um, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever win against Vakif Bank, Key? No. <laughs> 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 what kind of question is this? Milena uh, and I played for uh, Bursa yes, for I one know. season in a few a few years ago. But uh, yeah, I think that's the only time we, we would have come across each other. It would have been the, those two games. Yeah, I the, think so. And, I think so. And there was one Champions League final when I played in Italy. Oh, hang on. That's Key oh, Michael sorry. just mentioning the Champions League final she played in. Unbelievable. And that's the other thing. That's the other thing that you actually cannot remember about volleyball. Yeah. Because of the how many games we play every single season. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I wonder that when you, when you have these kind of interviews and the podcaster asks you and like rattles off all of your acknowledgements or accomplishments, you're sort of like, oh, yeah, I did do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know yeah, you, but I don't remember from yeah. where. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's start with things that we do know then, because you signed for Vakif Bank after four amazing years playing in France. Am I correct in thinking you won four championships in a row and four cups in a row with Khan, Milena? I think there was one championship that we actually didn't win. We lost in the finals, but let's say three championships and four French Cups. Absolutely incredible. So, um... Why did you leave? Why did you decide that moving from France to Istanbul was the move for you? Well, then that was my chance to, to go to, for me, the best club in the world. Uh, and also my manager, he told me, like, this is your last chance. They will not call you anymore. So you have to go. Oh, to be that's... honest, I didn't want to leave Cannes because I, I was really happy there and all with all my teammates and all the people from the club. And also with the balcony where you can see the seaside and 
drink coffee with that view. <laughs> but still, mm. I had to go a step in front. So I just took the opportunity and I didn't make a mistake. Interesting. So your manager said it was your last chance. Had they, had they tried to sign you previously then? Exactly. Exactly. They tried to, to sign me just a couple of days after I already signed for Cannes for two more seasons. So that was the second call from them. And uh, at the end, I went there. That is, that is super interesting. Uh, were there any other teams that were interested? A couple, yes. I don't really, I, there were some Italian teams, I think. That was six years ago, come on. <laughs> 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 I, don't, I don't remember what happened yesterday, but uh, yeah, there were yeah. some Italian teams. And uh, also there was Valero from Switzerland at that time. They were good. Mm. But at the end, I just decided to come and work with Giovanni. And no regrets. Yeah. So what were your, what were your first impressions uh, when you first arrived at Vakif Bank then? How did, the, how did the transition begin for you? Actually, you know what is the funny story? Because the, the moment I came to Vakif Bank, the season before we played uh, against Vakif uh, with Khan for that qualifications for the final four. Yeah. And we won. We won against them. And that was like a huge success for Khan because no one expected that. And uh, I don't know why, but I didn't like them at all because they were super serious. You could see there is a lot of pressure and Giovanni was screaming and throwing all the things around. And, uh, so that was one of the reasons I didn't want to go there. Like, oh, I'm not being happy there. They will be all the time angry with me. You know? <laughs> and then after that, I came and actually everything changed. It was completely different than, than I thought. Ah. So the appearance was that it would be really stressful yeah. and really high pressure, but actually once you're inside, because yeah, I have yeah. the opposite impression. I hear from everyone that Vakif Bank gets really like supportive and it's a family and, and if Giovanni's pushing you, he's pushing you in the right way. I mean, these are the things that I hear from. That's true. That's true. Vakif yeah. Bank is really like a huge family. Yeah. Mm. But it just didn't look to me like that from the other side of the court. <laughs> to be fair, family arguments are the biggest arguments of them all. So maybe it's... That's uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> so you've, um, you've arrived then, of course, they must have been absolutely over the moon to sign you because it was the, well, the, the second time that we know of. Um, and then you're in this, this different environment and there are all these players that are, that are absolutely huge names. Of course, you were a you were a huge name yourself coming into that team. Uh, do you remember what your feelings were? Did you feel any pressure to perform or did you maybe feel like, oh, I, I don't know. We, we talk about imposter syndrome quite a lot, don't we, Key? Did you, did you mm. feel like you belonged there straight away? Well, I, uh, I don't know if you're going to believe me, but I was shaking the first practice. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And that time, Robin, uh, Robin from uh, Dutch team, she was there mm -hmm. with me, also first practice. And she was like, dude, why are you afraid? <laughs> <laughs> if you're shaking my dad, can you imagine how I feel? <laughs> but it was only one for the first practice. After that, I, I, was, I was relaxed when I met all the, all the people there. So already from the second practice, I felt pretty relaxed. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, do you know, this is, this is really nice, Key, isn't it? Because we, we always end up talking about Vakif Bank and Giovanni and their success, but to actually hear from players who are involved to know that it is a welcoming environment and a positive environment, I think that that tells us a lot. It makes me makes me feel nice things. Yeah, and especially because I want to hear from uh, other players that they that you obviously you've been a decorated best middle blocker many many times, but to hear that even you feel this this fear and this insecurity in the first few moments before you find your footing, I think that that's kind of it's encouraging to to I was, I was really shaking. <laughs> it was really bad. I was shaking so badly. Yeah. So they made you feel welcome. You'd stopped shaking, uh, <laughs> but there were some there were some huge moments in that first season, weren't there? You didn't win the national championship, but you'd have had your first Istanbul derby and the Champions League final four and the World Club Championships. What were those? What were those kind of moments like? Were they, did they feel different to the big games that you played with Khan? Uh, for example, everyone asked me, like, how is it possible that you won against Vaki Bank? We will never forget that. Like, it, it's not only people from the club, also people from, like, all the fans of Vaki mm -hmm. Bank. They asked me the same question. I said, we, we were just 
relaxed on the, on the court. We didn't care if we were going to win or lose. We know who the lucky bank is, so we got a chance to win against them and we used it. I don't know how, but it happened. We were pretty lucky. And uh, actually, the main thing I like here in Wacky Bank is that, uh, okay, there is a lot of pressure, really, and Giovanni will push you to the maximum every single practice, but still, outside the court, everyone is so cool, like you can be friends with literally everyone. It doesn't matter if there is a, someone from staff or players or even general manager. Like, it's really like a huge family. So mm -hmm. after that, I felt like whatever I need, I just know who to ask. They help me every single time. <laughs> are there any um, are there any players or or members of the management team who you could perhaps single out who sort of really made you feel welcome in those early days? Uh, the first thing that is on my mind is uh, our physio, okay. that he is there from the very beginning. So I felt really uh, good to to speak with him whenever I feel bad or something. Or he's he's a really nice guy and he's there like for more than ten years already. So he knows how to speak with you, how to make you feel better. So that's uh, his name is Sabri. Hey Sabri, big shout out to Sabri. <laughs> also, it, it, I know. Um, Vakif Bank's different to a lot of clubs because people do tend to stay for a long time. But when you do have sort of constantly moving parts and players coming in and out, having people like him who've been there for a long time really does help with that team ethic, doesn't it? Kind of helps to keep things together. A lot, really a lot, because you always have some players who are there for more than two years. Mm. So with him and uh, with some other people from staff, they are actually also pretty long there. You can always talk and they can always uh, tell you what to expect, how to react on some situation and the rest. And also the, before you asked me about the first season, that at the moment I felt like I brought the bad luck in the team. That's how I felt because we changed the team and we couldn't win what we wanted to win. So I felt really bad until we won the Champions League or whatever what next, next next season. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really not bad luck, hopefully. Uh, before we move on to, to 2016, I'd like to talk about the Champions League final, uh, final Four in 2015, only because this doesn't happen to me very often. I've got two Champions oh. League medalists oh. from the same <laughs> Final Four in the same conversation. Aki, what colour was yours in, in 2015? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure who is, who is trying to burn me or you, Milena, because Neither. I played like Rubisto <laughs> that on. season, uh, and I, I had a silver medal. But I think it's safe to say that Milena came away with uh, with a, with, a, with a with a stronger performance. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is, Milena, you did get a bronze medal that time, but you were the middle blocker in the dream team, and unfortunately, Key, you you didn't make the dream team. I was no, not, I was. <laughs> Just, you know, um, <laughs> I was just happy to be there. Let's be honest. <laughs> but that that was your first um, that was your first medal with Vakif Bank. Then that bronze medal. Of course, you'd you'd won a load with with Khan before that. Can you remember? I, do you know what I'm asking you? If you can remember getting a medal, you've got so many. You surely can't uh, you can't remember them all. But that was the first time you were on the podium with your new team. You were in the the dream team as well as the the best middle blocker alongside. Maya Poliak. Do you have any any memories from that? Uh, now I remember that that was uh, we played the game against Polish team for third mm -hmm. place, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't make it to the finals, and we were really, I don't know, we felt really bad, really sad. And uh, when I got that individual uh, award, it wasn't really. I wasn't really happy because I don't care about that much. I I prefer to win some goal with the team <laughs> but <laughs> at the end uh, I, I mean at that time I was really I appreciated a lot and I was grateful and actually I, it was a surprise for me to, to be there on the podium with the rest of the girls. It was interesting that you were um, in the dream team alongside Maya because I noticed that when you uh, did your your dream team for FIVB recently you put her alongside you uh, in the middle position so what is it you think that makes her such a great player and do you have any sort of memories of playing against Maya through the years? For me she is uh, one of the best middle blockers in the world because uh, she's super quick she has really good block with uh, hands over the net like that I cannot make sometimes 
and uh, she just can she can read the game and she always know where to go so i really enjoyed a lot watching her play a key did you uh you must have played against maya once or twice yeah, well, she was in she was in Ashabaji in that of Champions course. League final. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course, crikey! <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, she was a fantastic player. So much grit, so much. I, I mean, you could just feel the 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 enthusiasm coming off her as she after she would make a block. I, I was it was very impressive. Yeah, you are you are afraid to attack against her. Trust me. Yeah, really. Yeah. Crikey. I think a lot of people probably say the same about you, Mila. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, actually, you know, I was watching in preparation for this conversation. I was watching some highlight videos of you. And I'm really, I'm just so impressed at your shoulder strength. This is something I wanted to ask you about just personally, middle blocker to middle blocker. Because <laughs> no, I, legitimately, I you go arms. over the net and it looks like your arms don't move at all. The ball hits you and there's, it's not going anywhere. It's incredible. It's really impressive. Do you do some special training for this or...? Oh, we do, we do a lot of individual trainings with Giovanni. Trust me, every single morning we have on practice only for middle blockers. And he always says that's his favorite group because we can do literally everything except reception, of course. Yeah. And uh, he, kill, he kills us in one hour. So we, we do a lot of exercises for blocking. Yeah. But of course, that I did also a lot of practices with the Bitevic national team before I, I went to Wackerbank. But still, at also those videos, you can see how my elbow is going like this. <laughs> yeah, back. a little bit on the left one, yeah. <laughs> yes. And mostly I have problems with, with my left arm. So if you want to make a point, just go against my left arm and you will make it. Uh-oh. Hot tip, anyone it's listening. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you're giving away the secrets. We're going to have Vakif Bank on the phone, like, cut that bit out of the podcast. Get rid of it. <laughs> I feel like it's a trick, though. I feel like it's a trick. Because I know anyone who tries to go sharp ang angle on you, they're going to get that left arm, and then that ball's not going anywhere. <laughs> if they hit here, then no. But if they hit here, they will make a point. <laughs> um, for the for the benefit of the podcast listeners because this is an audio medium uh first pointed <laughs> to the forearm second pointed to the fingertips and then uh, um, so all right let's let's try and take it back uh, do you know i could we this could quite potentially go on all night key we've really got to we could just talk blocking uh, me and melina we could just talk blocking all night i'm sorry for anyone who's listening who's not that's a, a huge blocker. mistake huge yeah. mistake that you invited two middle blockers <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh this is great um, but so that season you talked about you thought you were the bad luck charm because they were they were national champions going into the season you you didn't win the national championship or the champions league that year but after that year the success was was phenomenal do you remember the sort of conversations that were had at the end of 2015 to to set you up for 2016 and beyond wow <laughs> well, I don't, I don't really remember what Giovanni said at that moment, but uh, because I know him pretty well, hmm. I think he said something like, okay, just we changed the team and this year didn't work pretty well, that we have to, to improve a lot from the, for the next season. We have to start from the beginning and try to improve and to be better and uh, more luck in the next season. Like you cannot change anything, every, anything because it just didn't work. Well, the next season did work, didn't it? <laughs> um, I mean, you were <laughs> much the... better than the last one. <laughs> yeah. So you won, you won your first national championship. You beat Fenerbahce, and then what did you get? Bronze medal in the World Club Championships as well. How did you get on in the Champions League? You didn't win the Champions League that year, did you? But no. the consistency over the season to to win that national championship that must have that must have felt pretty amazing. A another national championship in another country for you. At least you want something. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you define yourself by your, your team's success then? Well, uh, I don't know what to say because uh, and he also knows that the middle blockers are not really like the, the first thing in the team, that setter is always the yeah. most important to, player and also the, the position four and uh, the middles are let's say the last thing on the list <laughs> the players so I, I don't see myself that much important from team I'm just uh, trying to help to I don't know to touch some ball in the block to make uh, other people attack after that to, to counter attack or whatever but 
for me, honestly, I feel like I improved a lot with, with Giovanni and with all the stuff. And I want to thank them for that, of course. And uh, I'm, I'm always trying to give my best, to give 100% of myself and to try to help the team as much as possible. And do you feel like if you, for example, if you have one great season, you win everything, do you, is, that's the bar, you know? After that, you feel like if you don't achieve that, then it's not success. That's almost the, the double-edged sword of being a successful team, right? Do you always feel like you have to try to get that same level again? That's, that's the thing with athletes. I think that you always yeah. want more. That you always want, want more. For example, that 2018, I think we won everything, but still yeah. you want to win all over again in 2019, but you just yeah. couldn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's, let's roll 16, 17 and 17, 18 into one then, because it, for that period of time, it, it felt like you were untouchable. So in 16 and 17, it was the first time you'd won the Champions League and the World Club Championship double. Then the following year, 2018, the only word I can think of to describe it is perfect. It was, it was the perfect year, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, but in a later episode, we're going to talk about... There we go, about, podcast over. Well, yeah, but in a later episode, we're going to talk about um, the success you've had with the national team. But from a Vakif Bank perspective... World champions, I mean, you're personally second world championship in what, like two months or whatever. Um, <laughs> European champion, league champion, cup champion, super cup champion. Did you forget how to lose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. It's much easier when you have Ju Ting in your team. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So it's like you, you, don't, you don't have to do anything on the court <laughs> because Ju will fix it. <laughs> Just before the game, Joe, do you feel okay? Okay, you need something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little massage? Yeah, what do you need? Yes. You need a massage? You need to, do you need a sandwich? What do you need? You? <laughs> she just has to be happy and then we will win. But the, oh, the, awesome. the, names, the names in that team in 2018, so yourself and Gosde, Kelsey Robinson, Nas, Ju, was it... I mean, sometimes you put all those, those world-class players together and it, and it doesn't work for whatever reason why do you think it worked for your team uh because i think we didn't have these superstars in the team that, that we have like good players in the team that can work together to have, to make that atmosphere you know and that's the most important actually in the team sport she knows for sure because if you have only one player who who will uh, act like me 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 then that will fall out you mm. cannot work like that I think that was the main reason why we actually won everything that season. Because the, the Champions League final, that was the, the first one I ever went to. It was the one in Bucharest, wasn't it? Yeah. And you were, were you match point down in the semi-final? Have I made that up? Because you played in Moco in the semi, didn't you? Yes. yes and that, that was, was an really amazing like game. Absolutely incredible game of, of volleyball. Uh, interesting you, you say that was like the final. Is that what it felt like for you? It felt like that for sure because Imoko at that time was a great team mm -hmm. and uh, we played five sets and also we almost lost that fifth set. Yes. I don't know how we came back, but uh, I think that Gosde was the, the key point in the game that she, she just started screaming on the court and we, <laughs> we, we brought our energy back and we won that game and after that we were really like, oh, that felt really like a final line. We felt like we already won Champions League. Because that was her sort of swan song, wasn't it? She said goodbye to the sport after that. Yeah, she's really a great captain. Mm -hmm. She's a great leader. And uh, I wish that every team has a captain like she was. And when a player, a player like her leaves the fray, what do you, do you think, oh, crikey, what are we, we going to do now? Or do you realise that you know, the, the team's bigger than one player and go from there? Of course, the team is bigger than one player, but still at the beginning it was weird without her on the court, on the practices. Uh, but uh, I don't know, a, a month later you just get used to it and uh, you know that you can always go and drink coffee with her, for example, to see her somewhere, not yeah. on the court, but still you're in some touch with her. But really, we really missed her a lot at the beginning, but after that we just uh, we came back and it was like, okay, mm -hmm. leave her alone to, to enjoy with her baby and her husband. So. <laughs> And she's happy now, and that's important. Yeah, uh, well, we spoke to her for um, 
for the Unscripted series. Uh, for those of you that are listening to the A Space for the first time, Unscripted is definitely something that you should spend some time with. <laughs> uh, uh, shameless <laughs> plug. Yeah, shameless <laughs> plug. Uh, but she she does seem like she is really enjoying life after volleyball. And I suppose for for anybody at any stage of their career to know that you can be happy after you hang them up, then then that's that's pretty good news, right? Yeah, I'm sure that she she misses the volleyball a lot, but she just don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. I think it must be so hard. I mean, I'm kind of tossing up whether it's time for me to retire. And I think the biggest thing is you you've done it your whole life. You do know anything else but volleyball. I mean, I talk to Dave and Matt all the mm. time. That I joke that I've never had a real job, and I'm trying to do these things like getting on Zoom or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it must be so difficult. Just just going from one day training every day of your life to the next day nothing I mean yeah I, for sure it's weird I am also I started thinking already about my retirement and when is the, the right time for that and it's already like oh what am I going to do after <laughs> like, yeah. I will for sure go for for some practice or something I will be like completely free for a month and after that I will be I start shaking like okay yeah. I need I need some ball I need some volleyball <laughs> because exactly what back. you said that's the thing that you're doing all your life so it's weird after yeah what do you think you and might how, do? Oh, sorry, Kay, go on. No, I was just going to say, how do, how do you feel physically? Do Because you, you're 29, is that right now? Almost 30. Still <laughs> young and fresh, still fresh. <laughs> That's, how I, feel feel inside. Feel That's how I feel inside. That's how I feel inside. I'm still young. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I feel like I, I'll, I'll keep telling myself I'm young until I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> still in here. <laughs> but you feel good? You Physically, you feel like your body could keep going? Yeah, thanks God for now. I feel good. Of course, we will see after the season what will happen, how my body will feel. And uh, I will listen to my body and that's all. When it's uh, yeah. about time to stop, I will stop and that's all. One season, take one at a time and then just reassess yeah. every and year. And when yeah. I'm 40, I'm like, okay, let's do some practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still not quitting. <laughs> one more yeah. season. Um, well, let's talk about this season then because it was a, a pretty abrupt end um, in the end. You were still in the Champions League. You were at the top of the table. What were your, what were your thoughts on it all? Are you frustrated? Does it feel like unfinished business? Yeah, I feel like that actually because uh, that's the thing that happened that no one expected. So we were, we were in really good condition before this coronavirus happened. So I don't know. I just thought that we could, we could make it to at least for sure win a Turkish championship. And at the end, to try also to win this champion champion league title. So I don't know. It uh, I don't know. A month ago, we already thought that we will probably keep going with volleyball in this season, but uh, they just said, okay, we'll stop with everything. And I felt sorry because I don't know. I really had that thought that we can we can do a lot this season, especially because we had we had a lot of troubles in the beginning because we changed the team and we need time to to adapt. But uh, at the end, we started playing really good and. Exactly. I feel like there is unfinished business. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Key, were you going to come in there? Uh, no, I was, I, I'm just, I, I'm like nodding my head along, <laughs> which doesn't help on a podcast. I need no. to use my words. <laughs> just that. But yeah, I feel exactly the same way. I think all athletes that, that I've heard speaking about this in the past few months, it's just, the immediate reaction is shock and sadness and, you know, unfinished business, exactly like you say. But slowly you just start to realize everyone in the world is going through this really crazy time and then we just accept okay mm. well so much for this season and we start again from scratch next season but it's just so bizarre it's so unusual yeah. but great news for for fans of you Milena you are back with Back If Bank next year um I, I won't ask you for too many details because I know it's all top secret but are you already sort of making plans has Giovanni been in touch stayed in touch you've you've got all the team together or yeah we will start the preparation on the first of July crikey July yeah, I, yes because July. our season yes <laughs> 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 because our season we started the first week of September they will start earlier so we can finish earlier because of the Olympics and everything next mm. summer. So, uh, yeah, 1st of July, we will start with preparation. We have exactly two months to prepare and hopefully we will be all healthy in these two months and that's it. Wow. It's exciting yeah, though, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this 
next <laughs> season. I mean, obviously, my my role in the sport is very, very different to to the two of you. But I've I've missed it so much, and I'll never take it for granted ever again. I cannot <laughs> wait to just to just see some volleyball, to enjoy some volleyball. So, I mean, how, how are you feeling about playing again? I suppose this is a, a question for both of you, really. Uh, Milena, have you have you missed it? Have you missed being out on the court? Uh, I didn't miss ball that much, like to to play with the teammates, you know, to have mm. that fun in practice, and also. Mm two months without balls is really like too much and we started practicing actually now with national team a little bit okay but that that is really funny because if you don't touch the ball for i don't know for a week and still it's funny can you imagine how it looks like after two months without (laughs) doing anything so (laughs) at least we were practicing something at home but without ball of course Mm -hmm. we were jumping our neighbors over the head trying to jump to stay in that condition with jumps but it didn't work because it's not the same at home or on the court and you had to do everything. You just self-motivate yourself, right? You're, you, whether you work out or you don't work out. I mean, uh, at the beginning, you, it was, was your coach. It, uh, yeah, we got a program every every day from our uh, conditional coach from uh, from the club. And uh, at the beginning, it was easy. Okay, I will practice now. Then the rest of the day will be off. I will watch some movies and stay at home. And then, but month after, it was harder and harder to find the motivation yeah. because, like, I'm. I'm doing this for nothing because who knows when this this will finish or who knows when we are going to start the next season. So it was really hard after, but at the end, yeah, we made it. Yeah, that's the same for me. We had we we had a few girls still in quarantine together, and we would work out together for like two hours every day yeah. in the sweating in the grass. And you know, little by little, it goes from two hours to one and a half to one hour. <laughs> and now it's like two months later, and maybe I'll go for a run, and that's. <laughs> Yeah, at the beginning, I, I was practicing at 10 a.m. And then uh, yeah. at the end of quarantine, I was doing it at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., you know. I couldn't make yeah. myself to work out. Uh, yeah, I spoke yeah. to uh, Stretsko Lisinach the other day, and he swears that he just can't jump anymore. He's like, honestly, <laughs> I try to jump. I cannot jump. Um, have, have you have you tried, Milena and Ki, actually? No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, <laughs> if, afraid. everything will break if I jump. <laughs> Really? And key? Well, I don't know, because I had um, a bit of jumper's knee, some tendonitis at the end of the season. So I, I was waiting for the season to be over that I could take a break from jumping, actually. <laughs> so maybe it's been the best thing for me. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, I hope so. I hope when the time is right, you both come back and have an amazing season. Um, <laughs> right. We really should talk about Vakif Bank here, shouldn't we? Oh, okay. I, I was wondering, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Milena, so... Obviously, you're still you're still young. I know we joke about being nearly Thank thirty. You. <laughs> <laughs> you're oh. the first one who told me that. Uh, <laughs> Next, he's going to be asking about your skincare routine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've been trying to iron out my wrinkles. It doesn't work. Um, but you you've been there a long time now, and whether you like it or not, you're one of the senior players. Okay, um, there are some. <laughs> amazing young players coming through now at Vakif Bank. Um, do you see it as part of your responsibility to almost put an arm around the shoulder and make them feel welcome and kind of show them the, the ways of the world? And, and what do you think their impact has been on the way that the team plays? Well, I think that's uh, the responsibility of all the older players, not mm. only me. Because uh, Giovanni, actually, he always at the beginning of the season, he has a meeting with all of us, you know, and we were, we were talking about new players that are coming, especially young ones. And then you have to be there to, to help them, to scream at them if they are lazy and practice or whatever. <laughs> so you have to be one who, who is going to push them to work, to work hard, because if not, he is going to keep us there for five hours of practice without any problem. <laughs> they don't push. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm uh, mostly the one who who will be like uh, you know a, a little bit aggressive with them. I mean aggressive that I I will scream at them if they don't want that if they don't want to work. And uh, for example, our captain this uh, from the two seasons before Melis, she she is 
she is the nice one, you know. She she will talk with them on Turkish, of course, in the nice way, and I will be the one screaming on English. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always like the bad cop in the team. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. Oh, I love that. Do you have that though? Because I imagine at that level that everyone is just ha- of the same mentality that I'm here to work. This is my job. We're gonna win everything. Because I, I imagine at the highest level, you don't even get people that would show up just to be casual. Do you have? Do you deal with that? Uh, yes, at the beginning. But after they they learn how to how to work, how to be responsible on the practice. So after it gets easier. But at the beginning, of course, you have to push them a little bit. Yeah. Show them what's what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were voted in the team of the decade recently congratulations i don't know if you saw that it was um it was yourself <laughs> maya poya tiana boscovich uh, francesca piccinini gozde uh, and maya two mayas a middle and a yes. and then and then monica uh, de Genera was uh, was the libero that was a very similar team uh, apart from Zhu and kim that that you named as your dream team obviously Zhu and kim be, being non-european um Firstly, congratulations. Secondly, does it, I mean, you, you, you've had so many accolades, both as an individual and a team. When you see some sort of great volleyball minds have, have come together and, and voted you into a, a team of the decade, how does that make you feel? Firstly, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I, I didn't even know that they are going to vote for a team of decade. I found out that on Instagram. Okay. There's someone tagged me on some photo and uh, I was like, okay, this is not for sure. This is just the first debate that we had. They are going to talk more. And, uh, and then I just started getting calls from the journalists and everything. I was like, oh, uh, people, I don't ah. know what talking about. I have no idea what is going on here, but thank you. <laughs> after, that, when the, yeah, after that, when the CV posted the, um, the something on the internet, then I read, it, I read about it and I was like, okay. For the first, I felt old. <laughs> because it's in a decade <laughs> and then like oh ha you are already going you are you're playing uh, for 10 years on the really high level and it was really like who and then i don't know but my uh personal opinion i think there is uh, more better middle blockers than i am but at the end i was really grateful for because they chose me and next to my apolog of course <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay you say other middle blockers who would you have who who do you think should have been considered as well as you and Maya well Maya is the number one for me also the, the really the great middle blocker is also Eda mm. uh, from Turkish national team and uh, I don't know for European it's I think if you ask me for a world middle block it's okay this was on European level and everything but also I think that Eda is really she deserves to be uh, on that uh, list but I don't know, actually. Those two are the number one and two for me. Any names you'd stick in there, Key? What about Robin de Cruyff? Yeah. She's also, she's also great in the bucket, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have personal favorites, but I... I <laughs> oh, so <laughs> you're sitting on the <laughs> fence. Come on, we're having this conversation amongst friends and you're tight-lipped. Unbelievable. I I was listening to this Team of the Decade podcast and I just thought, I think I would, I would probably just vote my friends in if I was (laughs) making myself a Team of the Decade. You know, I would just vote in people that I know are just really nice people. (laughs) So I wouldn't be any good at voting these kind of things. Um, How important are the supporters in Turkish volleyball with Vakif Bank because every time I visit Istanbul it just and I, I describe it like this every time we do something like this it's like a it's like a mecca for women's volleyball isn't it and um, if you've just got so many phenomenal players phenomenal teams coaches supporters they all seem to be there at, at some point or another so what is the support like and and sort of what are the what are the atmospheres of those of those big games like do you still do they still feel as special now as they always have for you yes for sure because uh, turkish people they love they love they love volleyball especially if we play against some of the best clubs in the turkey i don't know fenerbahce fenerbahce zajibashi uh there is always a full gym and it, for me uh, it's like a seventh player on the court you know 
that means a lot if they they come there and support you because you feel much more motivated to play the game then it's it's really bad to play in front of the empty gym it's really mm. bad like you're on practice and you cannot find any motivation to play against the team uh, uh, on the other side of the net so it means a lot and also they know all the players they recognize them on the on the on the street and it's really like uh, we got a lot of messages also on these social networks and I think they really enjoy to, to watch the volleyball there. Have you ever had any strange messages? Oof, a lot, but this is not for the, <laughs> yeah. for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> not for the podcast. We had a whole conversation, Milana, the other day about how I always get questions about feet. Do you get those kind of questions? Yeah, can I massage your feet? Yeah, <laughs> like what is wrong with people, right? Like who's writing you, these messages? And can you can you kick me with your feet also? I mean, I really got a lot I never of got this. messages. <laughs> I usually just get how tall are you and what size are your feet? And then sometimes like massaging feet. But oh, this is fantastic. No, but it's no, true. You, really you really don't want to know all the messages. <laughs> really yeah. No, but, but most of them. Instagram. Most of them are nice, right? Most people mean well. And yes, they, yes, they... there is a lot of nice messages, mostly. Okay, good. Yeah, um, this is not to d- deter the fans from messaging me like that. It's more <laughs> just to say, look, uh, let's just keep it on a certain level. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for complimenting my feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I must, uh, I must compose myself. Uh, let's do a top five then. Can you give us, and goodness me, this is, this is a difficult choice, but your top five moments with Vakif Bank. It can be anything from a game or a season or a teammate, or you just need to give us your five top moments with Vakif Bank. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's uh, put as a number one uh, all the trophies we won together. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the, the all number of them. one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so we, we don't have to repeat <laughs> all of them together, number one. Uh, number two, let's say all the celebration we had after <laughs> winning those trophies. <laughs> it's always so funny because uh, we have a tradition to go out like, all together, staff and players, and everyone, and that we dance and jump and really sing all night long. And you bring and the it, cup with you and really, everybody drinks from the, the cup. Do you know, <laughs> one, of, one of my memories of Bucharest, actually, after you'd won um, against CSM Arba Blach in the final, was you all dancing with the fans on the yes. court. I thought that was so amazing. Aww. Yeah, yeah. That's also one of the best things. Uh, after you win something, uh, it's really like fun, fun uh, celebration. That, uh, let's say that we are waiting for that the whole season, <laughs> just for that <laughs> moment to go out to celebrate. No dancing uh, in the season, only dancing after the season. So, yeah. number one, the trophies. Two, the celebrations. Three, uh, all that, uh, I don't know, the atmosphere and the, the hanging out with all the, the people from the, the club. All these uh, team dinners and team breakfasts and whatever. I say that's number three. And I don't know what to say, what else, because it's all like, oh, it's all coming together. There were so many nice moments. Uh, let's say four motivational speech of Giovanni before every important game. Is he good? That's really something. Is he good at making speeches? Yeah, he's pretty good actually. I don't know how it's possible. Every, every time he says something different, because really he comes to the locker room before every game. Mm-hmm. Okay, before some non-important game, there is a short conversation. But after uh, before the important games, finals, and anything, he comes there and he speaks for 15 minutes. I don't know how. It's like mm-hmm. he reads somewhere. You know, it just it's coming out of his mouth. I don't know how. <laughs> Let's say that's number four, and really, uh, he's one of the best with that. I, d- I don't know so many coaches with a really great motivational uh, speech. <laughs> number five is that the <laughs> decision I made uh, six years ago that I signed for Lucky mm-hmm. Well, it's been... And, a- oh, sorry, Key, go on. Sorry, no, just do you, do you imagine yourself ever playing anywhere else, or are you sort of set, like, this is where I want to finish my career, this is my home? No. It depends how I feel after this season, but uh, I, I mean, my wish is to try something else. Really? 
yeah. I wasn't expecting that. To go some to some other country also to to see how is uh, all going there with the volleyball and fans and you know so I will see. I it's can still imagine you playing it in Italy. Maybe I feel like maybe in Italy you you would be. Can really be. Happy. It's also pretty close to my home, so maybe I don't know. Mm. We will see. There is a lot of time. Tell you what, I'm fascinated sure. by is this um, is this new professional league in the USA that Jordan Larson's involved with. I think if that develops over the coming years i wonder if any of the top european players might go and spend a season or two over there would playing in the usa interest you Milena? honestly i'm more uh, type of the player that uh, wants to play close to home you know because if i i don't know if i go to play somewhere in china japan usa brazil it would be really if i feel in some depression or something that i cannot go home for a weekend that i think that would kill me <laughs> <laughs> and i feel i feel much uh, that much more when i'm older now you know because i didn't feel like that before and now whenever i have like two three days off i just go home and uh, i came back pretty fresh yeah. wonderful and yeah. uh, so if you do i mean obviously we none of us really know what's uh, what's going to happen and uh, hopefully we get you back on the court Milena. we get you back on the court key and we get me back in the commentary box talking about <laughs> you both playing fantastically well um, but but what would you how would you describe your legacy with Vakif Bank? Do you think they'll be talking about you for years to come and everything that you've done with the team? <laughs> Can you ask someone else about that? <laughs> it's a difficult Key. question, Dave. Yeah, it's, it's pretty you want me to talk question. about Milena's Key. legacy? What do, what, do you think, what do you think her legacy will be with Vakif Bank? With Vaki Bank specifically or specifically, in general? Yes, yes, oh, yes. We can't, with we can't mix media because in the next episode, okay, me and Dan really. will be talking about the Serbian success and then you and I are going to talk about the path to the podium. True, and we've true, got, true. We've got Milena for three episodes. So let's keep it in the Vaki Bank box for this particular, uh, for this particular episode. Um, I don't know. Well, I think the legacy is not just what you've built with trophies and with medals hanging around your neck. I think the legacy that you build and you're leaving with a club, like you said, when you came in, you were a bit nervous. It seemed a bit, uh, you know, an, an, an aggressive, hostile situation, but now you're leaving it as a family. And that's kind of special, no? I mean, people from around the world see what you've built at Vacuum Bank and they, everyone is, is envious of this club and of playing with you. So it's like my second home. It's like yeah. my second home and I, whenever I go there, like I feel like I know everyone and it doesn't feel weird anymore. I mean, I, I could say that also after the first year, <laughs> but okay, not now, after six. How's your Turkish? Uh, my Turkish <laughs> is good enough to talk with the people on the street, uh, but uh, the only problem is that all the things we are doing on practice are in English and also Turkish players, they have to learn English. Uh, but all the Turkish I know, I learned from the Turkish players they, when they talk. So I, I'm i like, uh, what is the name of that bird? That uh, A parrot. A parrot, yes. Yeah. I'm like a parrot <laughs> because I just go and repeat what they say and ask what <laughs> does it mean. And then I remember. And mostly yeah. I learn from taxi drivers in Turkey. <laughs> really? <laughs> because... <laughs> They cannot stop talking when you enter and when they see that you're not Turkish, they start talking with you and you tell them, sorry, I don't understand you. They, then they try to, to speak slowly, you know, so you can understand them better. Mm -hmm. And that's how uh, I learn most, most of the Turkish I know. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Maybe I just need to go to Istanbul and spend the day in a taxi and I'll be... <laughs> there you go, you'll be I'll fluent. be fluent by the end, but I'll be broke because uh, I tell you what, Italy, if you're going to move to Italy, Milena, do not get taxis anywhere. They are so expensive. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. I, I went to the Palo Verde once for an Imoco game, got a taxi from the airport, and I knew it was going to be expensive. When I saw the taxi driver had a Rolex, I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> deep trouble here. Um, I think that just about concludes episode one, Key. Do you? I think so. I think we did well. Yeah. What do you think, Milena? Yeah, I agree. Hey, if you're happy, I'm proud I'm of happy. us. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, well, we've got you for, for three episodes and I hope we've talked about Vakif Bank enough to quench the thirst of the supporters because they are amazing supporters and it's always great to, to talk 
two great players about great clubs. Uh, this has been the Ace Space podcast. Key, it's time for your test. When does it come out? Sorry, do you hear the dog barking? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Can you guys hear it? Or, or yeah, no? we, can, we can just about hear it, but I'm always, <laughs> no, I'm always I here for dog content. To, there, was another, there was another podcast that I was on and I could hear it in the background. I just kept talking with the dog. I just tried to present, uh, pretend it wasn't happening, so... I, I think it's a sign because... <laughs> it would have been um, fine. Okay, sorry. I, no, I, I think it's a sign because I was doing um, the outro for Mystery Man today and I did it on my walk and a dog barked right at the end. So I think that's a, that's a sign of, of good luck <laughs> and this has been a great episode because we got a dog at the end. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Key, when do the podcasts come out? They come out every Monday and Friday. Yes, they do. Thank you very much for listening. Like, share, subscribe. And also... Hashtag. Oh, what, yeah, hashtag. Goodness me, go on. Let Volleyball Talk. The hashtag is Let Volleyball Talk. I'm a terrible podcast host. I always forget the <laughs> The marketing. A-Space is going to go viral if everyone starts hashtagging Let Volleyball Talk. <laughs> uh, this has been the A-Space. Thank you very much for listening. I will speak to you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.